Hello to all you hip skips out there, and welcome to the jungle. Join Disney historian David Dr. Skipper Marley and art director and crooner Trevor Kelly as these former jungle skips explore the world of Disney, pop culture and theme parks. But hold on tight because just like a jungle cruise, their conversations often head deep into uncharted waters. Now, grab a seat and enjoy Expedition 25, Grim Grinning Ghosts, Big Bertha's Jungle Hut and the Mad Hatter's Extra Mad Tea Party. Move it up, Skips. Hey, Trevor, how's it going? Hello. Hello. Uh, for those of you who aren't on Patreon and can't see at least Dave's clean-cut, lovely hair and face, we are recording remotely this time. We are. We are. Dave's at home, and uh, I didn't make bail, so <laughs> I'd really like those, to... <laughs> those prison phones are really clear. The quality is amazing. Uh, you know, the cops have a really good fiber setup. Do they really? You just got to keep putting quarters in every five minutes. The The podcast room fills up real fast at jail, <laughs> so you have to shiv your way in. But That's uh, That makes sense. I wondered how Jimmy Fallon was always on those podcasts. Now I know. <laughs> it's all those true crime podcasts. They're, they're exactly. recording them real time now in jail. Exactly. Yeah, that tracks. That tracks. Uh, yeah. I'd like to thank the California Prison Work Release Program, though, for allowing me to be part of this, uh, <laughs> this show today. <laughs> I used to say that at the Jungle Cruise. That was my favorite joke going into the and dock. I would say, thank you for letting me spend this time with you and your lovely family. <laughs> <laughs> and managers, we got a, that was one of the ones we got a note on. Really? Managers were like, you can't do jokes about being out of prison at Disneyland. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not fantasy land. <laughs> this is America. Nobody gets out of prison. Jungle Cruise is supposed uh, Adventureland, you're supposed to be a little on edge. So what more on edge than a felon right? taking you and your family into the middle of the jungle? Right. Hey, it could be a series of misdemeanors. It doesn't have to be a felon. <laughs> you don't know. It was a class one offense. I, it was. <laughs> I was set up by the man. <laughs> uh, speaking of rough and tumble people at Disneyland, I, I don't yeah. know if you saw this. Did you see the fight by the Mad Tea Party? Yes. That, and that sentence is one of the weirdest sentences you're ever going to hear on this know, podcast. Right? Uh, I guess they are mad. So, uh, Like adults were swinging at each other and then a guy like fell on the ground and a woman starts kicking him. <laughs> like, right. what is this? What is this? Scotland? Like, that's how they fight there. <laughs> the, the thing that surprised me was when the Mad Hatter came out and said, I'll cut a bitch <laughs> <laughs> and just joined right in. <laughs> yeah like i've seen people get plenty angry but to start swinging but at least security looked like they were on it this time yeah absolutely the, i don't want to make fun of the security guards but the ones in the other fights they couldn't they couldn't stop anyone from fighting and maybe, they just stood there and watched exactly maybe they're hiring actual security guards now uh, mm-hmm. Because there's been a a, a string of uh, bare knuckle brawls at both parks. Yeah. Who who would fight at DCA? Did they fight because they were in DCA? Was that? <laughs> I, I meant uh, Walt Disney World. I don't know oh, that Walt I've Disney seen World. any uh, California oh. adventure tumbles. All the booze, oddly enough, makes them more mellow. You're all happy to be there, so right? Why fight? Exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah. That well it attracts it. There'd be fights in Florida. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that one that took place in Toontown was just sad because those families just keep fighting. And there's these two um, older security guards yeah. who just stood there and watched. And I'm like, well, they're there to be witness. I'm like, that's not what security is supposed to do. Uh, so it looked like these guys were there to break it up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Always interesting seeing, because I feel like, I don't want to be one of those people that's like, well, back in my day, this never used to happen. But I don't yeah. recall it happening with uh, f- such frequency. Uh, how how are you feeling uh, two days out of the uh, Hot Ones Challenge? That was going to be what I was going to ask you. Oh. I felt surprisingly good. Yeah. Uh, I thought I'd be dead that night, but I wasn't. The next day, I don't want to go into gory detail because it wasn't too bad. But I did have two uh, bowel movements that were slightly painful. Uh, <laughs> and I'm like... That hurt. And then I realized, dude, you ate uh, pepper spray last night, right? essentially, that it's going to hurt. That's what was I'd terrifying never... was when yeah. uh, was when Fakasha Boy Derek told us that that last one was basically the yeah. same Scoville level as pepper spray. 
Yeah. Yeah. He was there telling us what several of them were, which is like at the fourth one, he's like, okay, this is as hot as cayenne pepper. I'm like, oh, I put cayenne pepper on almost everything I mm-hmm. eat on a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we handled that way better than I expected. <laughs> Me too. I would almost do it again. We, so- we actually, I felt so good afterwards that uh, we went to strong water afterwards. Are you serious? Yeah. Wow. How much did you have to drink? Uh, too much. <laughs> I was feeling pretty good off that spice high. Wow. Wow. See, I didn't get the spice high. You and Jess said you had it. Got a little spice high. I didn't. I just came home. I had a bowl of ice cream and a piece of toast and then went to bed. That's much smarter. I yeah. wish I'd done that. Yeah. I was. And then the next day I'm like, I'm feeling good. And then about nine o'clock, I'm like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is going to be, I thought it was going to be bad, but I was fine by like the early afternoon. All right. That was just, yeah, brief. Yeah. It was good. Me and John were saying, because our good friend John, who's going to be uh, part of the Halloween parade unofficial live stream with us. You mean you mean the official? The the officially unofficial. That's right. It is so uh, officially unofficial. That's right. <laughs> but uh, we both said that now after trying the entire Hot Ones gauntlet, a lot of those celebrities are little uh, little wusses. Well, what Derek Bakasha Boy said, he's like, a lot of these people are just eating grilled chicken breast and vegetables. They They're not... For their diet, so they stay 80 pounds and five foot eleven. This is true. So they're not eating fun, spicy food, so they're not used to it. Clearly, you and I are. And yeah, the, yeah our bodies are like, this is what we train for. All that That's McDonald's right. and Del Taco. Oh, <laughs> I've been eating spicy food like crazy for th- ever since you told me it was gonna happen. Yeah. I've been back on the spicy food diet hard. Agree. Yeah. yeah. Nothing close to what we hit. No. <laughs> Nothing close. That last one took me to a different place. Oh. Uh. I lost the ability to see color. <laughs> Everything was like a film noir movie, you know? It was just like black and white, and you were wearing a fedora. It all made sense. <laughs> Man. I will say that, let, let the record show, you yeah. handled that way better than anybody gave you credit for going into it. And I don't know why. Everybody thought I was going to die, and I don't know why that was. <laughs> But the uh, the recording lives in perpetuity on our Patreon, does. and thank you to all of our uh, our Shriners for joining. And then the next time we'll be probably in January, we'll do it live from the Magic Kingdom. Yes. Well, from Disneyland, not the Magic Kingdom, but Disneyland, even better. Isn't that weird? Uh, like, where did that come from? Because you want to call it Walt Disney's Magic Kingdom, and didn't they call it that like in the old TV show? Yeah. And then it was always Disney World, but now Disney World is the whole resort. Yeah. And they've changed Disney World, the park, to the Magic Kingdom. I don't like, like that. When we were there in, in 2017, I'm like, well, what, what the hell's the Magic Kingdom? What is that? I'm like, oh, that's Disney World. They're like, no, Disneyland, Disney World is the whole resort. I'm like, whatever. Stop changing things. <laughs> <laughs> so I full disclosure, sometimes before we start recording, I just I type in Disneyland in Google and I hit news. <laughs> <laughs> that explains so much. It does. <laughs> He's always so topical. Uh, <laughs> but I saw, I think it was Walt Disney World News Today had an article about uh, which one. And anytime I say had an article, I read the headline and I did not go further. <laughs> you are like all of my students. They had an article about Disneyland versus Walt Disney World, which Jungle Cruise is better. <gasps> it's not a hard choice. There doesn't need to it's, be an article devoted to this. It's not even close. What did they say, though? Uh, again, did not read the article. I didn't okay. care to read the article because I don't want to read in a fair and balanced, impartial opinion on this. I'm going to yeah. skew Disneyland. And no offense to our Walt Disney World brethren. Uh, it's just where I was. So I have a, what, a partial. And Well, what I found out in the researching the Jungle Cruise history book, which will be available again, maybe for Christmas, maybe mm. not. I got a lot of work to do. Uh, I got a lot of <laughs> editing editing to still do on it. Uh at Walt Disney World, they had a lot of college program kids go through. Oh. So getting a skipper with more than a year or so experience is very rare. Where when we were there, there were skippers that had been there for multiple years. So they were very good and polished. And these are just kids that are there for a semester, maybe a year, and then they leave and that's it. And then out. Yeah. And so you don't get that kind of, they're not going to be wild and edgy because they're doing this for college credit. And maybe have a career at Disney when they're older. So yeah. they're not going to rock the boat or we yeah. didn't care. I was, I knew I was limited time yeah. magic. Yes. <laughs> I, 
I, I was teaching at Cal State Fullerton. I'm like, fire me. I, <laughs> right. I don't, I'm here to have fun. And that's why they kept trying to get me to work at Thunder or Indy. Hmm. And I would just tell them, I, uh, I, I don't want to do a bummer job. I, I, I don't want to measure kids and do that kind of stuff. I yeah. want to have fun. So that's why I was at Jungle Cruise. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. But the Hot Ones Challenge was fun. I enjoyed that. Me too. So never we, again, we, but, uh, I will say again. we've been utilizing some of the hot sauces, uh, have you? Yeah. That we really liked, uh, the adobo loco, uh, the jalapeno uh-huh. one. Uh-huh. Love it. Yeah. 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 One of those four or five or six was really good, but still gringo bandito is still my go-to hot sauce. I love gringo bandito. Uh, gringo bandito, a fantastic choice. Uh, and yep. if you are, I love it. If you're local in Anaheim or in the Orange County area, uh, go to Adya over in the Packing House, and uh, she has a hot sauce called Spice Girl. Uh, it is one of the best hot sauces. It's an Indian-inspired uh, kind of hot sauce, like curry nice. hot sauce. Yeah. And uh, it's got some heat. Awesome. Is it Sporty Spice? <laughs> that's uh, Yeah, that's, uh, that's the next one coming out. <coughs> That was my favorite Spice Girl was Sporty Spice. I don't know what that says about me, but uh, my favorite was Stabby Spice. She wasn't Stab- in Ooh. Stab. She wasn't in long. No, real quick. Uh, but ironically, she's still in prison. So uh... <laughs> there were actually way more Spice Girls at the start, and Stabby Spice <laughs> took care of that. <laughs> she took care of it. There will only be five, and That's then there right. you go. That's she how the Beatles started too. Ringo just right? came in there and messed everybody up. Yep, that's up. He stabbed Pete Best in the chest and took, right. his drums, <laughs> took his drum kit. Boom! <laughs> that first a Cavern sh- Club show was brutal. <laughs> he, it was a sharpened drumstick. He just carved it down and just, Ugh. This goes in here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the drummer now. <laughs> and a one and a two. And a two. And a stab and a go. <laughs> Uh, I guess speaking of stabbing, uh, one of the topics I had, Halloween movies. Are Ooh, there cool. Do you have any like go-to, I don't watch scary movies that often. Do you have any go-to uh-huh. Halloween films that you enjoy? Uh, specifically Halloween, I always like to watch both The Corpse Bride, which I love. Oh. I think that's underrated. And Nightmare Before Christmas. Ooh. Although Corpse Bride is great, although it seems like their budget ran out about two thirds of the way through. Oh, really? Because it has all, the, has all these great songs and this great numbers, and then it just stops like two thirds of the way in. They're like, no more songs. <laughs> it's just, and I'm like, so I remember watching it in the theater, like, is that, did they just like stop making songs for this movie halfway? Can you do that in a musical? But it's, it's really good. But my favorite like horror movie of all time, I've been wanting to watch it, and no one in my family wants to watch it. Uh, the the 2004 version of Dawn of the Dead. Really? It introduced zombies that could run. Oh no! It it was so terrifying. I was I've never done this before or since. I was screaming at the theater. I'm like, run! <laughs> oh my god, run! And Deb kept grabbing, going, stop! You're you're and I would like sit up and like, oh my god! Because uh, there's this one scene where you see this guy walking and he's clearly a zombie. And he turns and looks at the person and then just starts sprinting full speed at him. And you didn't know they could run yet. Oh, no. And it was terrifying. I think I pooped myself. So <laughs> I I also don't have nightmares a lot. I had nightmares that woke me up in terror three nights in a row after I saw it. It scared the hell out of me. And then uh, I bought the DVD because I'm a moron. And I, I kept it wrapped in plastic for like a week. And then I watched the how they made it. I watched like... The makeup, I watched the how fake it was. Yeah. So then I could rewatch it. Didn't do any good to oh. make me not scared. Still just as terrified. Had Ving Rames in it. Oh my uh, goodness. Just and there's a scene in the very, very beginning um that uh our daughters would accidentally recreate uh that is it, it looks like a sweet moment, but it's a horrible zombie moment. And our girls would unknowingly do it all of the time. <laughs> uh it's it's a terrifying movie. Okay, yeah, I I uh, all of our friends love watching scary movies, Jess included. So yeah. I get I get roped into movie nights at the Mabes with uh, the nice. Wrecking Crew here and there, uh, even though I hate scary movies. But there's one out that I desperately want to see. There is a movie out and about on Hulu right now, which Hulu is celebrating Huluween. Uh, oh yeah, which kudos to whoever came up with that on the yeah. marketing team. 
they have Slother House on there right I now. I saw the ad for that. How the hell did that get made? It's a sloth that is murdering sorority house chicks uh, for an hour and a half. Wow. Uh, I wasn't interested in it until there's a couple movie sites I go to, and one of them had a review on it, and they said, surprisingly better than you'd ever expect it to be. <laughs> really? So I have to see this now. No, I got to watch it. Uh, last uh, Halloween, they were promoting a show I had been on on the History Channel. Called, uh, uh, I think we talked about it before. It's one of the worst shows that's ever been on the History Channel called The Nostradamus Effect. That's right. I think I yeah. texted you. I'm like, Dave, your yeah. show's on Hulu. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I wonder if they will promote that again. What Were you on every episode or was this specific episodes? I was on four episodes. Okay. Or three, three episodes. They hired me to do one and because it was about like modern events and whatnot. So I, I forget what I was supposed to do. And at the end, they're like, hey, do you ever think about the JFK assassination? I'm like, and Bay of Pigs, I'm like, yeah. Oh, cool. Let's ask you about that. And so they did that for a while. <laughs> it's too bad uh, they didn't ask you years later when you had all that fun uh, JFK autopsy knowledge. <laughs> right. <laughs> right? I only have some still, but yeah. I have more than I used to have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have more than the general public's ever seen. Uh, yes. <laughs> that and the O.J. Simpson murders. I have more than... Any regular human being should ever have to see. <laughs> um, I, well, I, I think I've dominated the topic bringing All up right. so far, so go for it. What I wanted to do was, uh, I want to tell you this one Disney thing, and then I got another a question for you. Yeah. Speaking of Disney movies, I watched the latest Haunted Mansion movie. Oh, you week. did? Yes. Thoughts? Thoughts and feelings? So my next topic, <laughs> uh, I have... As good as the Jungle Cruise movie. It wasn't... Oh, no, that movie sucks. It's literally, <laughs> the John Cruise movie is literally one of the worst movies I've ever paid money to see. Oh, wow. Ever, ever. It was that bad. And I'm, and it wasn't just because I was a skipper, because I enjoyed the first like five, 10 minutes, and then it just became a suck fest of awful. Mm. Uh, like a committee clearly wrote it, and then executives ha- wanted to have a say. Like 25 people helped design that movie, and none of them knew what the hell they were doing. That's a shame. Um, and The Rock. Not a good actor. I don't know if you know that. He's not. Uh, I've heard. I've heard this. If you're looking for that kind of, that's he does that. Other than that. He is really nothing. good at being the rock. He is better than anyone. I've heard this. He's, he's the best at that. Anything else, you're in a... You're in pretty shallow water. I know we've uh, I know we've touched upon the Fast and the Furious movies before. Yes. Uh, but I will say, uh, again, The Rock, incredible in the Fast is and the Furious movies. Okay. Yes. That's incredible. His vibe. Uh, That's his vibe. So good because he knows what movie he's in. Unlike Vin Diesel, who I don't know that anybody... I think Vin Diesel is watching different movies <laughs> than everybody else's for Fast and okay. the Furious. Why? What is he doing? I think he thinks of it as like an almost Shakespearean hmm. epic war tragedy film. And everybody else is like, this is the dumbest, most amazing thing I've ever seen put on film. I think he sure. thinks it a, it's a higher level. Still, haven't, still have no desire to see it. Uh, so Haunted uh, Mansion. So Haunted Mansion. It was the first one was bad. This one was also just awful. No, oh. um, but it had a million. It wasn't as bad as the Eddie Murphy one. Okay, but that's that's a low bar, <laughs> <clears throat> right? Like, it's a super low bar. Yeah, almost. It's, uh, it's almost. There was no movie before. Anything yes. is better. Like if the Haunted Mansion movie with Eddie Murphy was like a a three out of ten. This was like a four and a half out of 10. Even with Danny DeVito. Just, yes. He's not in a lot. It's got a lot of, it's what was cool about it was <clears throat> they have every Easter egg from the Haunted Mansion you could ever hope to see. Oh, awesome. The wallpaper and things in the background. So there was a lot of stuff to see. Like, oh, that's from the ride. That's from the ride. That's from the ride. This movie sucks. That's from the ride. <laughs> that's from the ride. But the story was, it, the funny thing is, is, uh, um, oh God, what is her name? The star of it. Uh, Rosario Dawson. Dark- Daredevil, yeah, Rosario Darson. Darson, I just changed her name. <laughs> it's uh, Darson's Creek. <laughs> Darson's Creek. That, that, that there, Rosario Darson. Uh, she has a she has a son. Uh, as, as a little boy, maybe he's like eight or nine or ten. This kid's freaking hysterical. Really? Like, I wish they gave him more to do. Like, I watch this kid and some of his reactions, and I'm like, 
if this kid doesn't end up on Saturday Night Live in like 10 years, I would be surprised. Okay. Like there's a, there's a, there's a scene in the trailer where she says, he gets, okay, I did Sage River. It'll make it safe. And he goes, will it though? <laughs> just like his delivery was just deadly. So when they gave him lines to do, he was just, just fantastic at it. Okay. So, and he's a little kid. So, uh, yeah. Other than that, it was, a. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis is Madame Leota. You're like, okay. And there's like a big scene at the end. You're like, well, I know how this is going to end. Like there's a stretching room and there's all these, mm. it was, you know, Owen Wilson is played. Uh, I think he plays Owen Wilson in this movie. Oh. Where it's a lot of, wow, that's amazing. There's wow. ghosts. Wow. <laughs> ghosts. That's like, wow. Did you know so, Jared Leto was the hat box ghost? It could have literally been anybody. Right? It was like, who is the CGI ghost? It's like, any actor who talks like this. So, you know, I don't know what he brought to the role. You know, what's no weird about Jared to... Leto? No, feel free to offend Jared Leto because I don't know what he brings to anything. But what I have heard is that he is a cult leader and has his own island. That's what I have heard that as well. Uh, my daughter's told me I'm going to say a controversial opinion. Oh, you this is this is going to this is going to shut the podcast down right now. <laughs> um it's it's not racist or sexist or hateful, but it will get us canceled. Here's my opinion. Okay. The movie Morbius is an underrated gem. There, I said it. Dave. Oh, I, no. I, I, <laughs> I, I watched it ready to hate it. And so I and so my family phrase would come, come on, guys, it's Morbin time. Oh. We want to watch Morbius. It's, uh, it's not as bad as I expected it to be. I would rather watch it five times than either Haunted Mansion movie halfway through. Here's the weird thing about you, Dave, that uh, uh, <laughs> that most people probably don't realize is that okay. anything you love, other people hate, mm-hmm. and vice versa. And I don't, and I'm not doing that deliberately. I'm not trying to be a hipster. Like I find things that I love, and no, nobody likes it. Nobody, nobody cares. So based on Dave's review of the Haunted Mansion, there's a good <laughs> chance this is a great movie. <laughs> It's it's better than the first one. Okay. But not it's not great. I, I'll check it out. I do love me some haunted mansion. That's uh that's one of the few rides. Well, it's not one of the few yeah. rides, but uh, that ride has a really good vibe to it. It does. It does. I remember I interviewed a skipper and this who was in, worked there in the 1970s and his goal was to work at the haunted mansion. That's why he hired in. Oh. And for 3 years he kept trying to get trained at haunted mansion. Yeah. And they wouldn't let him. And they finally got trained. I'm like, oh, you finally had your, that's how he became a skipper because they wouldn't train him anywhere else. And I'm like, wow, you finally got to do it. How was it? He's like, I worked there for a week and then said, I never want to work this attraction again. <laughs> Jeez. He goes, I had them pull my knowledge so they couldn't make me work there anymore. Oh my god! like, why? He goes, you walk for miles on that treadmill at the exit. So you're walking all day long for hours. He goes, and I hated just sitting there frowning all day long. Oh. And I, and I hated being inside in the dark all day long. And it was just like depressing. And I wanted to have more fun. So, all right. Cool, I always, I guess you could always tell who worked mansion. Cause they were translucent uh, when they were picking <laughs> yeah. up their costumes. Yeah. 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 They were, they were pretty much, they looked like the hitchhiking ghosts. <laughs> they were that clear. Yeah. Did you ever do a walkthrough of the Hana mansion? The only ride I ever got to do a walkthrough of was, uh, uh-huh. it was Indy. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay, cool. We did a walk through the Haunted Mansion, which was cool. We got to go down on the floor where the ghosts dance and oh, everything. Oh, awesome. Like the, we got to walk up the stairs by where the two guys shoot at each other. And and uh, we got to go through every single part of it. It was so fun. But the part I remember the most is, and I hope I haven't told this before, was we went to the cemetery. And right when you come down the hill, there's the, the guy with the, the, the caretaker, right? Yeah, the Don Knotts tur- looking guy. Yeah, yeah. And as you turn, there's off to your left, there's a bunch of tombstones that are kind of doing this one up. On the back of them, are painted naked pinup girls. What? And they were done by at the Disney studios by the Disney artists. So it's like this forties, forties or fifties styles, like pinup girls, but they're just butt naked on the back of them. And it's real. They're faint. They're kind of hard to see, but somebody sat there and sketched a bunch of naked women on the back of all those tombstones. Wow. There you go. I was like, is that what a naked woman looks like? I had no, I didn't know. That was my introduction. <laughs> there you go. Now you you learned something new at Disneyland. I did. I'm like, well, they have different parts than boys. I didn't know. I just thought, there you go. You saw their uh, their grim grinning ghosts. (laughs) 
How did I know man. you were going to have a perfect <laughs> phrase? That's right. I became man. And then I entered the stretching room, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. I assume it means your pants, but... Uh... <laughs> yeah, like I'm wearing pants. So. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was fun. <clears throat> it was cool. It was a fun walkthrough. Um, so uh, what? Uh, I have another question. This is one we did on the hot ones. Okay. Uh, that I wanted to re-ask because I think it's a good deep question. Yeah. When Jess asked it to both of us, we were on the verge of dying because it was later in the show. Those last uh, three uh, sauces, I don't have memory. I don't. That de bomb was just deadly. I that was just pure fire. I don't know why anybody would eat that. Somebody that hates other people made that sauce and hates themselves. <laughs> but it was the question that I asked that I thought was ooh was was very deep. Was the what would your life have been like oh. if you had not worked at Disney? Or, and then add on, or the Jungle Cruise. Like, yeah. how has how it changed because you worked at Disneyland? And how has it changed because you worked at Jungle Cruise? Like, what if you'd worked somewhere else? Yeah. So, how is your life different because you worked at Disneyland? Uh, I think I made a lot of references to being Cruise. dead in a ditch on the- uh, You did. On the thing. I've been, I've been told. I've been informed. That's what I said for most of it. It was uh, a lot of dead in the ditch, yes. <laughs> which I still stand by. But uh, I will say, I was thinking about that the other day, actually. Um it it literally is, whereas like in Back to the Future, the precipice of Doc Brown's life is the day he slipped, hit his head, and came up with a flex capacitor. That is the jumping off point for any sort of other thing in his life. Uh, yeah. Jungle Cruise is that for me. I would not have the friends I have. I would not have yep. the experiences I currently have because of it. I wouldn't have Jess. I wouldn't have anything that I currently have, if I had not threw on that white suit and that Star Wars tie and walked my 120 pound ass into Team Disney building in 2000, we could hear your bones clank. You were skinny. <laughs> they thought I was a skeleton that had escaped from the haunted mansion, and they had called security to usher me back. It was the bones and the white suit, is what it was. <laughs> but the yeah, Star Wars. T- the Star Wars type in him go, oh, no, wait, no, wait. He's a real boy. Leave him alone. Leave him alone. <laughs> That's not on theme. Uh, That's not on theme. He must be a human. He must be a human. Hire him. No, it, it literally changed my entire life and gave yeah. me every experience and every every uh, ability that I currently have that I hold dear is because of that ride. Wow. They're going to show this when they're hiring people at Disneyland, like to encourage people to hire. They're going to show this clip. That's amazing. Now, do you think it would have been different if you worked at Disneyland, but not the Jungle Cruise? 100%. Like if you were in Tomorrowland or Fantasyland or something? 100%. Uh, yeah? I, I don't know because I don't know if you felt this way, but the second I started working at Jungle, I'm like, these are my people. Yeah. Everybody has the right sense of humor, that right uh, level of uh, sarcasm, and I don't know that you're going to get that at, at like Storybook Land or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was weird when you would work parades or Fantasmic with other cast members who, to them, this was just a job, and they're talking about the union and like complaining about their yeah. hours, and I'm like, go get a job at Jungle. It's just a blast every day. Or, or that, yeah. or they've drank... We, I think everybody at Jungle had mm. the right amount of Kool Aid in their system. Where yes, you understand the history and the you have a love for the park, but you also want to really take the piss out of it. Yeah, so it was a good balancing act. I think that's perfectly well said. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's uh, I think that was the correct skipper vibe. Mm-hmm. You love it, you respect it. You're going to take it down a notch, right? <laughs> <laughs> what about you? I think the same. Uh, Because I worked there for just a summer in 96, and I had a lot of fun experiences, but uh, I still had this longing, like I knew I hadn't done everything I wanted to do there. And so I was desperate to go back and get rehired at Jungle Cruise when I came back to California. Um, So like, if I just had that one experience in 96, like if I'd stayed in DC or whatever teaching, I'd have been like, wow, I had one summer that was really fun. And uh, I hung out with great people and told jokes. But when I came back in the 2000s, that's where I made some lifelong friends. Mm -hmm. I checked my phone earlier today when I wrote the question. Uh, Two thirds of the people in my phone contact list are former skippers. Oh, really? Yeah. Like those are 
most of the people I hang out with are Jungle Cruise skippers. Yeah. It's it's incredible that this ragtag group of idiots uh, <laughs> went on and we've all done pretty interesting things. Like, you know, uh, Poocher right? is like the guy. He's like the photographer for Disney right now, right? He's the he's the photographer for Walt Disney Imagineering. It's crazy. Yeah. Right? And a couple other of our friends have are still Imagineers or have become yeah. Imagineers. Um, but like I was talking to, I got texted for a uh, text from Matt Neary. Remember Matt Neary? Oh yeah. He's, he's either that he's in the athletic department at, I think Northwestern university in Illinois. Yeah. And he's coming out in January and wants to hang out and do some skipper thing. Oh, awesome. Did you go to his going away party at his house? I don't know. That was the first skipper party I went to where I got drunk <laughs> off my ass. Like I couldn't drive home drunk off my ass. Like I had to, I had to be driven home. And pick up my car later. It was, <laughs> it was like that. A friend who goes made a, a it was basically pineapple and rum. And I like sweet drinks. Here, try this. I'm like, oh, pineapple juice. Bam. I'm mean, like, that's good. And I had another one. I'm like, oh, oh God. There's a lot of rum in that. And they're like, yep, too late. So I was. Yeah. The was, uh, the skipper parties were always fantastic. I guess speaking yeah. of Halloween parties are coming up. The skipper parties were always incredible. Yeah. From what I recall. I never went to a weekend at Benny's. Did you? I never oh, made it to one. Weekend at Benny's was aces. You know, that's where a a, a skipper got his nickname Pizza Boy. Oh, it was from a weekend at, from it was from what, weekend a weekend at Benny's. Weekend. Yep, yep, yep. It was a skipper uh, who was brand new to the jungle, had only worked there for a week or two. And so he came to the party, got very drunk, and passed out in a... He, was, he threw up while sitting, <laughs> passed out in the kitchen. So they stuck his head in a pizza box... So if he threw up, he would throw up in the pizza box, okay. which he did. And someone came in and goes, how cool, the pizza boy's hanging out. Because <laughs> <laughs> they thought he was the delivery boy because a bunch of skippers didn't know who he was. <laughs> and so he said the next day at work, everybody was calling him pizza boy. And it stuck. Now, I know you've wow. mentioned crazy Jungle Cruise parties that you found out uh, through research in the book. Uh, Is there any that outside of like the, the banana ball that got like wildly out of control or are legendary? Uh, the banana balls were big. It was just kind of parties that I think we had been to where you'd have them in like somebody's house mm -hmm. in Anaheim. Or I went to one in orange where it just got so loud. The cop showed up. Yeah. It's only parties I've been to where the cop showed up. And uh, I put this in the book because it's a, a, a bad cop story. Uh, but the cop was like this and that and blah, blah, blah. He said, you guys work at Disneyland? And we're like, yes. He goes, give us some passes and we'll leave. And so they went and gave the cops two passes to Disneyland. And they went, you guys have a good night and left. And I'm like, someone's like, oh, that's cool. That's cool. I'm like, dude, we just bought off the cops. We just, we just, we just gave them the equivalent of a couple hundred dollars to go away. I'm like, that's, and then I saw it at another party. The cops the, said so the cops in Anaheim knew that if it was a bunch of, of cast members, you would hassle them for, for tickets to the park and then you'd leave them alone. Wow. I know. It's as corrupt as hell. But I I was there. I watched cops from Orange. Do, watch, I get, I get busted now. I saw cops from Orange, <laughs> from Orange do it. And then from Anaheim, it was kind of known that, that that was a good way to get out of a ticket. Well, there you go. Pro tip for any current <laughs> cast member listening. Uh, we veered wildly off course. We have. Uh, we have. Disneyland uh, changed your life. Uh, do you think? Oh, yeah. it, do you think it would be different if you worked uh, in Fantasyland or somewhere else? Uh, I'm a pretty social guy, so I knew I would have made a lot of friends. Like when I came back, if I worked like three years somewhere else, I think I would have made some friends, but it wouldn't be nearly what it is for the skippers. Yeah, like because because I and I knew it was special when I was there, which was I'm happy about. But like when I've interviewed skippers that worked there in the '60s and '70s we instantly had a bond. And some of these guys I'm friends with, even though some of them worked there before I was born, because uh, we had the exact same stories about working there in the rain and working at Christmas and doing jokes at Bertha. And it's like we had done the same job together. Mm. Uh, and it was this cool bond because it's such a unique experience. Because every other ride, you're hitting buttons, you're putting seatbelts on, you're pushing the lap bar down. It's similar across the park. And then jungle is this weird, get out. I'm going to do some jokes. Yeah. I'm going to fire a gun. Here's some animal <laughs> and get off my boat. If you don't think I'm funny, is this ride eight minutes long? Is it 15 minutes long? You decide. <laughs> that was my favorite thing. Yeah. The more, the more you laugh, the slower I went. 
Yeah, every other ride in the park, like there are computers now figuring out, like, make sure it's this. Yeah. And Jungle is still the only one where yep. it's largely dependent on who you have and whether you're, they're enjoying it. Exactly. 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 Yeah. That's why I liked it. If they weren't laughing, I was hitting that throttle. <laughs> they were gone. But I think it would have been uh, very different had I not worked there. I mean, my whole career has become based on the Jungle Cruise, the Skipper Show, and all of my art and my books. It's all because of that. The fact that I'm going to do this thing for the History Channel this yeah. week uh, is based on my love of Disney and the Jungle Cruise. So I'm excited about it. And your OnlyFans. Yeah. Let's not forget that. That's it uh... is a, It is the only Jungle Cruise-themed OnlyFans on there. That's right. Not the only Disneyland one, unfortunately. But... Uh, <laughs> There's a there's a couple naughty princess sites you got to check out. <laughs> oh, I, I I'm I'm gonna oh. make a note of this. <laughs> there might be, you know what? That actually might be a thing. It I'm afraid to even is. say that. <laughs> but uh, but if you are our only fans and you want to see Dave, just check out Big Bertha's Jungle Hut. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's my code name, and uh, that would be a very sad and lonely only fan. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Lonely fans. That's a new spin-off lonely. site. Oh, lonely Aww, fans. Oh, how so? <laughs> <laughs> if you set up a only fans, you don't get a lot of uh, viewers. It just moves you automatically no. to lonely fans. <laughs> lonely fans. <laughs> if you have ten the and price, under, <laughs> the the price drops dramatically to see anything on there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I found out. Uh, I saw a thing on the news uh, that comedians are going on only fans now. Really, as a way to make money. That there's like a whole straight non-naked side to it oh. so isn't that exciting all right there maybe maybe start. we'll be on only fans soon enough hey all right i'll go topless for only <laughs> <I'm, Da-da-da. I'm... laughs> uh no you don't you don't, to, don't ever apologize dave <laughs> i just saw it, and i know you saw it too uh the article the scientific reason you want to visit disneyland Oh yeah, you see that? Yeah, I did. Re- I read that. You yeah. read it? Okay, good. I read. I, it. I didn't. Uh, I I just skimmed over it. Apparently, it relates to travel cravings. Uh huh. Is part of it. Yep. And nostalgia. Oh. That you have a desire to go because you went when you were younger. Odds are. Oh. Yeah. So, and I also saw that they have. They think that. The smells that they pump out in the park mm-hmm. that register yeah. with the brain kind of trigger. Yep certain parts yep. it, it it gets locked into your memory and the music that they play gets locked into your memory um this is a totally nerd element but when i was working on my my exams for my phd when i was working on a certain topic i would play certain mozart music over and over and over oh. again like the same symphony and then when i would switch to something else i'd play a different symphony and so when i went to take the test i would play that song back in my head and the facts would just come rushing back like crazy really um it were i've done it on a bunch of other things if i have to learn something i'll pick any kind of music it doesn't have to be classical but i'll pick a piece of music or a band and i'll play them over and over and over when i'm trying to learn that so if i have trouble later on i'll play the music again and work on it again and, and it will trigger your memory yeah because it works with alzheimer's patients really Al- alzheimer's patients may not know how to talk anymore or anything but you can play music and they'll start to sing songs oh, yeah there was a, a beautiful piece towards the end of his life that uh, Tony Bennett was a part of, and oh, mm-hmm. they were showing that he, even though he was having a lot of difficulties remembering things and even just kind of being coherent with it, the yeah. second the pianist started playing certain songs, yeah. he immediately remembered it, and the pianist was even saying, he's not just repeating like karaokeing yeah he's doing new phrasings on it he uh, is still completely with it the second this music yeah. fires back up oh that is very cool it's it's pretty wild. Very, very cool yeah yeah did you ever uh i i i only knew i found where a couple of the uh the smells were being pumped out on main street but nowhere uh-huh. else i don't know if they do it anywhere else just main street just like i think so but like the pirates of the caribbean has that real unique smell yeah um, Jungle Cruise skippers after a shift have a unique smell. They do. <laughs> um, want it or not, uh, if you fall in the river, you will permanently have a unique smell. Uh, and the bathrooms in Adventureland, they pump out a unique feces smell. <laughs> Filthy smell. But it's elephant feces, that's not right. human. That's that's a fun fact. They keep it wild animal. Walt thing. requested that. 
Exactly. It's <laughs> it's the, the smell of the veldt is what is what just is what they called it. And it used to be an A coupon to get in that one uh, just because it had that thing. But I don't Vel- know anywhere else to do it. by Armani. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hard pass hard pass (laughs) no i I mean and i guess that must be why also the parks run into such trouble anytime you try to change anything that has a long history behind it because you are literally murdering childhood for people yes you could change anything you want at walt disney world and people are fine with it if you change like the paint scheme on a building at one, one building at disneyland there are letters and emails and a, and a, you know, a GoFundMe campaign to have you executed. <laughs> it, I would hate to be running Disneyland just for that reason that, that you can't touch anything. Yeah. Without people throwing a fit. It's tough. Yeah. 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 Like uh, when they made all those changes to the Jungle Cruise, people were pissed. It was on like Fox News was talking about it. And what was interesting, every skipper I interviewed loved it and thought it was positive yeah. and they thought it was a better way to go. And it was all the non-skippers who were like, this is horrible. And what? The skippers must hate this. I'm like, nope, haven't found one that didn't like it better. Yeah. Yeah. For the Hot Ones Challenge, I was scanning through some more current videos of the Jungle Cruise, like uh-huh. POV videos and whatnot, just to see. Uh-huh. I would be thrilled uh, if I right. were still on that ride with like the the monkeys on the boat and uh, yeah. all the things. That's that's a yeah, yeah. blast. Right. My only complaint is they're too loud. Ah. The hippo pool is too loud, and then the the gift shop at the end is way too loud. Like you're trying to do material, and the, you have to fight against the mm. gift shop. And then if you're stuck there for like ten minutes, sometimes like you could be. Imagine hearing that constant cacophony. Yeah, I would hop off the boat and start breaking crap. By the way, ten po- ten points for Dave using cacophony in the podcast hey! today. I win! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, absolutely. It's, I mean, yeah. and, and we've both theorized that it's, it's to keep them from spieling, right? I, I think so. Cause it, it's, it's just too loud. I think the Imagineers just thought we'll make it loud enough for people to hear, mm. not realizing sometimes they're stuck there for a while when boats are being pulled on or off and you can't just always have it that loud. Uh, yeah. I think we have time for one more. Uh, do you, do you have a, a topic you'd like to... I just have a general one for the the time period about Halloween. Oh, okay. Like, uh, because Halloween is coming up uh, in a couple of weeks. So I want to know if you have a, like a favorite Halloween memory. It could be Disney related or not. I don't, I don't know if I have a Disney Halloween memory, but favorite do you have a favorite Halloween, Halloween memory? memory? Yeah. Uh, my, there was one time during the summer, I, I went to this campground. It went south really quick. Really? Uh, yeah. But before that, it was the time of my life. Really? Uh, yeah. Luckily, I was a virgin, so I got to leave. Nice. Yeah. Nice. But um, nice. The the first to die is the slutty girls, and then any and then any African Americans in the movie. That's right. Any that, always. Any, there's different tiers. The virgins. Yes. I just I I picked up my my calculus books and I said <laughs> I need to leave now, and I just wandered <laughs> off. And the man with the chainsaw let me go. Let you go. That that's pretty. That's very clever. He took pity on me. <laughs> Yeah, I would have lived through those two for the same reason. He said, this this poor lad is 120 pounds in a white suit with a Star Wars tie. Let's let him live. He's already dead wore... inside. Just let him yeah. live. <laughs> you wore a tie to your interview. That's so impressive. Though. You didn't? I dressed up. I don't know if I wore a tie, but I did like wear a dress shirt and, and slacks, and I tried to dress nice. I went into it. Uh, I would, if I could see me... Yeah. Now. Yeah. I would beat myself up. Why? It was the nerdiest little like, I'm going to go work for Disneyland. And I got there like an hour early. Yeah. I had a white suit on. I had a blue shirt and a blue Star Wars tie. Yeah. I had done all the research online about the interview. I mean, I'm happy I did it because it, it, it's where it I worked. am now. Yeah. What you did worked. But. Don't criticize it because it worked. Although wearing a Star Wars tie was a bold move because that's not a, Di- it wasn't a Disney property. Back I knew. Then. I already knew back then. I you s- did. I said. You called it. Uh, in the future. I In the interview, I even said this. I said, you know, in the future, Bob Iger, who you don't know yet, <laughs> is going to buy Lucasfilm. 
Little Bobby Iger. <laughs> he was working the popcorn stand at the time, he was, I think. He was. He was. In 2000, he was the popcorn boy. That's right. And then three years later, CEO. <laughs> he was working the one popcorn stand, and then he negotiated to own all the other popcorn stands in the park. Exactly. He just bought them. It was impressive. That's how he did it. Halloween yeah. memories. I think some of my, I, honestly, some of my favorite are in recent times with yeah. the Anaheim Halloween Parade. Oh my God, that's fun. It's been another kind of benchmark in my life, getting to be a part of that and also getting to host the online shows. And then the official Halloween Parade live broadcast coming up. I can't wait. That is literally one of my favorite things to do every year. I'm very excited because I'm, I'm, I, will, I will still call it the official broadcast, even <laughs> though I know it's not. I'm like, fire me. I'm doing it for free. Fire me. So for those of you listening... On the parade night, October 28th, I want to say it is, tune in on Twitch and YouTube. We host an aggressively ridiculous uh, live commentary of the parade as it rolls down Anaheim. Yeah, it was so much fun last year. I think this year is going to be better. What about you? uh, Favorite Halloween memories? Uh, Last year doing that live broadcast was was a blast. Yeah. And uh, having Halloween with little kids is awesome because they're so excited. Plus, when they go to bed... You just gorge on their candy and they don't know. They don't know. But probably my favorite one was uh, my first year in Washington, D.C. Uh, after I got married, we went uh, Georgetown and M Street, right in the middle of Washington, D.C. Mm-hmm. They shut the streets down. It's a huge street party and it's late October. So it's a little cold. And we went as Xena, the warrior princess and her little assistant, Gabrielle. <laughs> and so I wore like battle armor and a skirt and boots and I had a big sword and I rode the subway to Georgetown. And there's like, there, there were like men in their uniforms going to the Pentagon at night. And I'm sitting there dressed as, a, and I had long black wig on as Xena and Deb was her little assistant, Gabrielle. And we walked around and there were like three or four other Xenas, all of them women. Uh, and so uh, we made it on the local news that night. I went home, watched the channel 11 and there I am like in front of the camera. I'm like, huh, that's going to come back to haunt me. <laughs> So that was that was fun. And let me just say, ladies, wearing a skirt, good God, that wind goes right up there. Right up a cold blood gust of wind. Sweet God, it freezes off your giblets or niblets. <laughs> whatever, whatever you have, giblets or niblets or neither, it's it's unpleasant. I you know, i uh, coming off of Tiki Oasis with the lovely calf tan that Sheriff Darlin made me. Yeah. Uh, full convert to the easy breezy, beautiful uh life of uh yeah, yeah, an yeah. open bottomed uh outfit yeah yeah all right all right yeah you you looked good you you held that caftan very well uh, i've heard that yeah. from multiple people and uh i'll, yeah, I'll yeah. take the compliment yeah take it take it take it take <laughs> it yeah yeah i always want i want to get a cabana suit oh you should like the little shorts and the little shirt yeah I want, like, custom one just the cabana shorts are sometimes a little they're a little snug they are some of the guys wearing them a little i need one that's taken out just a bit because they're a little <laughs> Leave some mystery for the wedding night, young men. That's all I want to say. A little bit, a little bit more room for the stretching room. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now for the most dangerous part of our show, the return to civilization. If you've enjoyed the show and want to show some support while also getting some adventurously good extras, visit patreon.com slash the jungle podcast. Also, if you could be so kind as to follow the lads on Instagram, I know they'd be thrilled. At Dr. Skipper Marley and at the dot Trevor dot Kelly. See you hip skips next time in the jungle.